All right. Well, hey there, folks. I'm meteorologist Matt Barentine getting going here in our Fox Stream, uh, Fox 10 Golf Stream Center. And somebody has that TV monitor up, so I will have to find one of these remotes, see which one it works on. So, otherwise, I will get an echo the whole time. Sorry, just bear with me a second. There are literally remotes everywhere, and I do not know which one it goes to. Let's try that one. Ah, there we go. All right. Yeah, it's always something. All right. So let's get into this, folks. We have, uh, if you read the little note there uh, on the live stream here, we have a, a kind of a wild week of weather coming up. A lot of things are going to be happening. You look at what's going on out there right now today. Hey, that's pretty good stuff right there. It looks pretty quiet. We don't see a whole lot happening out there here at the moment, but that is going to change. We do have pretty good northwest breezes out there and that's going to help us out with our temperatures tonight by dropping them and dropping them pretty good. Uh, looking around the region right now you can see it's generally in the 50s so it's not too bad here at uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. We're in the mid 50s. Uh, there are other areas, the low 50s, even some 40s up there in Tennessee but that's not too out of the question but I'm going to widen things out. It's still November. Look at Minneapolis right now. 18 degrees. Middle of the afternoon. Eight Team degrees. There's some really chilly air up there. Some of that is going to work its way down to us. And I say some of that. And then what always happens when a when we have a cold blast, it gets modified before it gets here. Obviously, we're never going to be as cold as North Dakota or Minnesota or anything like that. Air gets modified as it gets transported south, but it still stays chilly when it starts that cold. So we are looking at some. Uh, Pretty cold mornings up ahead. So you can see Tuesday, Wednesday are going to be right around freezing. And that's along I-10, our metro areas. Our inland areas will certainly drop below freezing. So treat it like a freezing morning no matter where you're at. If you have some potted plants out there on the deck that you like to keep and take care of, bring those in or give them a good covering here for you because uh, we are looking at the possibility of a light freeze. So tonight... Tonight, tomorrow morning, we wake up mid to upper 30s. Wednesday morning, near freezing in many spots. Thursday morning, starting to bounce back a little bit at 40, but then look how much warmer we get by Friday and Saturday. So this is what I meant by a pretty wild swing of the weather because we're going to be pretty chilly, be 32 on Wednesday morning, double that by Saturday morning. And the reason we'll be double that is because we'll have a system coming in bringing rain and possibly a lot of rain. So... Like I said, a lot going on here just in a few days. All right, let me go ahead and sort of stay with the, the, the weather that we'll see in the next couple of days first. I'll get you the cold stuff first, then we'll get into the rain. Uh, tomorrow morning, like I said, we'll be in the mid to upper 30s to start off with. So it'll be a chilly start, but a nice start. And the sunshine will be out looking pretty like it does this afternoon. The afternoon for tomorrow, of course, once again, this is tomorrow for your Tuesday looking at upper 50s for highs. And that's about where we'll stay. And you can see sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. Real pretty day coming up for tomorrow. All right, so here's how it looks, sort of the short range forecast. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday. Of course, there's that uh, low right around freezing on Wednesday morning, but then bouncing back to 65 by Thursday afternoon. Notice zero, zero, zero on the rain chances. That's the next three days. All right, so let's get into Friday. This is Friday morning at 6 a.m. That's where I'm starting the future cast here. System moving in. By that time, we're probably already getting some rain across the area, possibly some heavy rain. Now, there's no indications of severe weather with the system, but we could certainly get some rumbles of thunder uh, here on Friday morning. Now, the thing is, by about noon on Friday, this model shows us kind of clearing out a little bit. So maybe only a morning event for us on Friday. But then what happens is this system stalls out. When you see this, a blue, a blue line with the arrows on it is a cold front. A red line with the circles on it, that's a warm front. When you see cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, that's a stalled out or stationary front. Now, this is a confusing part. When we say stalled out, that doesn't mean these things don't move. They, they still move, just not as much as a cold front sweeping on through or a warm front sweeping to the north they kind of wiggle around a little bit, maybe about the best way to put it. They do move, but just not as much. So we call them stationary fronts. And 
this can happen at this time of year. It can happen also a lot in the spring where a system comes on down, stalls out, and then what happens? Little areas of low pressure work their way along, kind of like a train on tracks, and keeps going through the same areas over and over again. So here we are Saturday morning showing some heavy rain around, and then it continues through lunchtime, and then it continues through the afternoon, and then it continues into the overnight hours, and then it continues into Sunday morning, and then it continues into Sunday middle of the day. Yeah, so we could be looking at a good bit of rain. So when this happens, when you get a system that stalls out, that's when you could get a pretty good rain event. Now, not written in stone just yet, something to certainly keep in mind. Hmm, sorry, my thing disappeared. Ah, there it goes. Not written in stone just yet, but a real possibility. How much rain are we talking about? Well, that model I just ran, the European model, look at what it's showing here. Look at these numbers. I'm going to blow this up big so you can see it on your screen better. They are big numbers. Lowest one on there is 2.82 inches. That's through Monday. So it's a seven-day uh, rainfall total. Um, that's the lowest is 2.82 inches. The highest is getting up well over four and a half inches. So those are some big rainfall total possibilities with that. Now that's one model, okay? That's the European model. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna run the, the American, the GFS model out seven days. These are still pretty big numbers. Remember the lowest one on the other one was 2.82. Lowest one on this one's 1.91 inches. And the other, the high end was like four and a half inches. On the other one, the high end on this one is about three and a half inches. So both these models are giving us a pretty good amount of rain. So one thing I always tell people, don't, don't look at these things, these rainfall accumulation models and go, hey, I'm in Calvert, I'm gonna get 2.28 inches of rain over the week. Not how, now these things are not that good. Wish they were. What they kind of, what they can do for us is help to give us a range. Now, this far out, the range is questionable. I'll, I'll just put it that way to you. But, but they're both very similar, so that gives me some confidence that we're looking at a decent amount of rain, probably at the low end about two inches, and the high end could be three inches or maybe even more, up to four inches. So we are you know, looking at a range here. And that's what I always talk to people about. We talk about rainfall amounts. We gotta talk about a range. I, I mean, I'd love, I'd love for the science to be able to pinpoint exact numbers like this and say, this is what it's going to be. Uh, we are nowhere near that yet. It would take a lot of computing power to figure something out like that. So what this really does is show us possibilities. On the low end, right around two inches. On the high end, maybe as much as four inches. So those are the, the realms of possibilities. Re realistically, you know, getting two to three inches is very realistic out of all this. So that's where we're at. That's what we're looking at this weekend. So we're talking about really cold air, uh, mid-30s tonight, low 30s on, on Wednesday morning, and then flipping the script, doing a full 180, Friday morning rain moving in, maybe even late Thursday night the rain moves in. Friday morning, it's really raining. Might get a little bit of break Friday afternoon, and then a system brings a good chunk of rain through the day on Saturday, and then through the day on Sunday, we could be looking at quite a few periods of heavy to moderate rainfall right through the weekend and really adding up in the rain buckets. Now, that said, you know, hey, we are still technically in a drought. Um, you know, that hasn't gone anywhere. Um, now, we did get rain, obviously, over the last couple of days, and it amounted to about an inch of rain. Um, so that won't really, we, this gets updated every Thursday. So we, it may show some slight improvements on Thursday, but it won't show any major improvements. We'll probably still mostly be in a level three drought, which is what, what it's showing right now, severe, that orange color. Most of our areas in that level three drought, some small areas in level four. Um, but if it shows up, like that this weekend, we get another two, three, four inches of rain. That'll make major improvements on this in the, in the next uh, update the following Thursday. So they update it once a week. You know, it takes a while to get into a drought and it takes a while to get out of a drought. You have to have consistent rains. Getting one good rainfall and then not raining for a month doesn't do you a whole lot of good. 
But when you start getting consistent rains, which is what we've started to do in just the last couple of weeks, where you get some, some good rainfall, then if four or five days later, you get another good rainfall, four or five days later, another good rainfall. Once you start doing that, like you, you know, it's like a train going down the tracks, and eventually you're just going faster and faster, and you're getting, you're chipping away at that drought, and eventually we'll pull out of the drought. We are still down more than 10 inches of rain on the year. We're not going to make that up before the end. At least I hope we are. We're not going to make that up before the end of December. It would take quite a bit of rain. Um, <laughs> hopefully we won't make up that. That would, that would flip us around to the other end where we're getting way too much rain. Um, but we could chip away at this drought and maybe have it mostly gone by the time we get to the first of the year and just start with a, with a clean slate in January. That would be good. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, once again, let me get that long-range forecast. Appreciate you hanging around here on our um, Fox 10 Gulfstream. If you're catching us on Facebook, please download our app. Please, please, please download our app. It's super easy. It's free, our Fox 10 weather app. You know, if you're, you know, in the house, you're watching us, maybe there's a severe weather situation, you're watching us on Fox 10, and then your power goes out, all you have to do is open up the app, hit the watch live button, and you are right back there and getting your information. So it's a great thing to have. We have a good radar on there. And then we do, like right now, and this is one of the long ones that we do. We do long updates every day, usually at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But we also do every day short ones, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. We do those like five, six times a day. And just to give you a quick little pit of what's going on, you know, you know what the temperatures are going to be, what the rain is going to look like. Just real quick thing. So, you know, you pick up your phone, you'll see the little notification there from the app. Click on it, get a 40 second update. You know what's going on that day. Super easy. It's us, you know, so you, so it's information you trust and uh, it's, it's free and it works really well. Uh, and there's also the alerts on there. You need to always need a good way to get alerts. And one thing I really like about ours is that you can choose your alerts. You don't have to get everything. If you're not a boater, you can flip off the marine. You don't need it, right? Um, so you can turn off some of these things you don't want to get updated on. And one thing I always tell people, there's two tabs on here. One says precipitation and one says lightning. Now, we're part of a company called Gray Communications, the second largest broadcasting company in the U.S. They put together this system, and it's like I said, it's a great app, and they adapt it to each station. But one of the things they've done is they've left precipitation and lightning on there for an alert. We don't need that. Don't so turn those off because it'll just I mean, you don't want this thing to tell you every time it rains. That's important in Arizona for Arizona stations for folks out west. Lightning is very rare. So they like to know when there's lightning around. We don't we don't need to know every time lightning is around because otherwise it just it's like every day just about huh? except for when we've had a drought. So that's the one thing. Turn off the lightning and turn off the precipitation for sure. Leave all the severe on there. You want to know when there's watches and warnings for tornado stuff. Uh, your marine, you know, obviously that's going to depend on whether or not you're a boater. And, you know, there's a few other things you can kind of pick through. Most of it I would just leave on because, you know, winter, rarely ever going to see that on there. But, hey, when it happens, you're going to want to know about it. So just leave it on there. Um, the two things, like I said, I would turn off are precipitation and lightning. We don't need constant updates when it's just raining here. That's important in Arizona or New Mexico or something like that. It's not that important to us. <laughs> Maybe it is these days, I guess, currently, but not 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 generally. We don't want to we don't want our phone letting us know every time it's raining or whether there's lightning out there. That's that's a bit much for us. That's the one tip I'll give you there on that. All right. So back to the long range forecast. Once again, thanks for sticking with me. This, these two o'clock updates that we do, they're they're long form. It's about getting you a bunch of information and really breaking down in a way that we can't do on air. We just don't have this kind of time. So that's why we spend a little extra time here. Like I said, if you want shorter ones, get our app. They're there as well, okay? You can just click on them, check it out. All right, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, cold air Wednesday morning, right around freezing. And then you can see how quickly we warm back up. I mean, by Friday, we're back in the mid-70s. That's why we're going to see some thunderstorms here on Friday, because we get pretty warm again. Once again, at this point, none of the models in, in the Storm Prediction Center, nothing shows us any uh, severe possibilities at this point. We'll keep an eye on it. That could change. But right now, I'm really not overly concerned. If we're not seeing any indications at this point, we're probably not going to see any significant severe weather here on Friday. And then rain chances... 
And folks, I'm being conservative with the 70 percents here. Those could easily go up. And the reason I'm being conservative because when front stall like I was showing you there, um, well, sometimes they can move a little to the north, a little to the south, and you can kind of miss out on some of the rain. So it's not nothing at this this far out is written in stone. Um, so we'll keep 70 percent for now, but in the coming days we'll keep looking at this forecast and you know maybe 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 we can trend them down or maybe we can trend them up. It'll just just it'll depend on how things are looking. Once again, if you joined a little late, I'll just run through this really quick. Um, this is Friday morning. It's showing the model, showing a system coming in. Um, heavy to moderate rain. Once again, severe weather not expected there. It shows the, the Friday round mostly in the morning and not as much going on in the afternoon or evening. But then by Saturday, see this front, when it's blue, red, blue, red, that means stalled out. And I mentioned this earlier. Fronts don't go fully, they don't fully stall out usually. I mean, they still do move a little bit. They just don't sweep through like a cold front or a warm front. So now we call this a stationary front. And what happens when this happens is it just creates like a, a highway for the rain and showers and storms to develop and move along. And this can happen at this time of year. It can happen as well in the springtime sometimes and where you can get a lot of rain because this system just kind of parks itself on top. That's all through the day on Saturday, showing rain around all day Saturday and all day Sunday as well. This is Sunday morning, going into Sunday around lunchtime, going into Sunday afternoon, showing rain around. And once again, it could be two plus inches of rain. That's what most of the modeling at this point is showing. And I'm, you know, I'm being a little conservative on that. It could be higher. So. Just something to be aware of. Real rain chances coming up for us over the weekend. In the immediate future, it's more about the cold air. Cold air tonight, mid-30s overnight tonight. Low 30s around freezing on Wednesday morning. So next two nights are going to be very chilly. And Wednesday morning, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, right down to around freezing. That's the immediate thing. Then things take a big 180, and then we're dealing with rain Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and possibly even into Monday as well depending on what that system does. So there's, like I said, stationary system. There's, there could be a lot of, um, it could be difficult to forecast because little shifts in it can make a big difference in how much rainfall we get. So we'll keep an eye on it for you. But it, once again, right, it's, it's a possibility. So something to think about as you make your weekend plans, it's, it, it could be pretty, could be dicey out there with the rainfall. Once again, I'm not anticipating severe weather, but you know, you can get a lot of rain like that. That can really change uh, weekend plans. So. Uh, meteorologist Matt Barentine, thank you for uh, listening to my, my ramblings here for your Monday afternoon. Once again, we do this every day around 2 o'clock here on our Fox 10 Golf Stream. You can not only get it, I mean, I know you, a lot of folks, you're probably getting it on Facebook. You can get it on our app. Please pick up our app. We'd appreciate that. There's a lot more information on there, a lot of great stuff. So anyway, have yourselves a great Monday. We got, I got to go because I got to go do the 3 o'clock show. We got the 3, the 4, the 5 o'clock. We'll be having updates all afternoon long. So please join us on Fox 10. Thank you so much. We will catch you soon.